So for the second problem set, we're going to be looking at the square footage of insulation to help us determining how many rolls of insulation we need using the square foot method. And then we will do the similar process, but we will look at the linear method to determine the number of rolls. So we'll need to know some information from the previous problem set. One of the things is on our specifications that's not included. We need to know that the rolls of bad insulation are 40 square feet per roll and they are 15 inches in width. So we will look at that once we get to that point. So number seven, the first thing we're dealing with is the square foot method. So we want to figure out what our exterior perimeter is for our structure. We calculated this many times before. It is two times our width of 26 feet plus two times our length of 36 feet. We do not include the brick ledge. We're dealing with the framing now. So it is the 26, not the 26.4. So 124 feet is our perimeter. So starting off, we can determine the square footage of our exterior wall. The square footage of exterior wall this is a vertical dimension that we're looking at. So we need to only look though at the stud cavity. We don't need to look at the full height of the wall because the insulation is only going to go in between the studs. So when we're determining what length we need to use, if we have an eight foot ceiling, we need to use our 92 and 5 eighths inch stud length for our calculation. So we can take our 124 foot perimeter that we just calculated and we can multiply that by our 92 and 5 eighths inch, convert it into feet, 957.125, roughly 957 square feet. Yes, we typically round up. So if you wrote 958, that would be acceptable even more so uh, in our calculations. But when we are going to continue on, we'll use our unrounded number. So our rounding only occurred for our final answer. You can leave it as 957.125. That would be acceptable as well. So for number nine, we can take what we just calculated that we have 957.125 square feet of exterior wall, which requires insulation. We can divide it by the 40 square foot per roll. And this is what I just showed you is given to us on our first page. Typically it would be given in the specs or per the manufacturer, whatever it is, whatever you're planning on using but we are using the 40 square foot roll. This is not a constant, this will change, so make sure you're paying attention on your problem set and what this number is that's given. So from that, we can determine this is 23.928, which we round up to the nearest whole number, 24 rolls of insulation that we need using the square foot method. But this is a very inflated number for two reasons. One, we didn't subtract out any of the opening square footage when we were determining this. We won't put insulation where we have doors or windows, so we don't have the most accurate number. If we wanted to try and find that, we can simply take the 957.125, which is the total square footage, we can subtract out the 226.42 square footage. This came from number six in the first problem set. So that came from our to table when we totaled all of the openings up. We get 226.42 square feet. So total, we have 730.705 square feet of exterior wall without the openings factored in. So just like then in number nine, we can take the square footage, the 730.705, divide it by the 40 square foot per roll, 
and we get 18.2676, which we round up to 19 rolls of insulation. And it's very clear to see that we just saved ourselves five whole rolls of insulation by not including the openings in our calculations. So it's important that even when we leave our openings in, when we're determining things such as exterior sheathing or drywall, because we'll go ahead and lay it out and then cut out later, for insulation there is no need to run the full height of the wall and then cut out later. We'll only put it where we need it in our um, framing. But it isn't exactly the most accurate either because we're dealing with a square footage number. And this square footage number includes the framing of the exterior walls. So wherever there's a stud, there won't be insulation. So we can try another method called the linear method to help us figure out a more accurate number even more so in regards to our insulation. To do that, we need to determine the length of one roll of insulation. Per the specs, we are told that it is 40 square feet per roll and that each roll is 15 inches wide. Remember, if we are using a 16 inch on center spacing, the actual cavity is going to be 14.5 inches in width. So that is why it's standard for a 15 inch insulation when we have 16 inch on center. It would typically be a 23 inch insulation when we are doing two foot on center. So you wanna make sure that you buy the appropriate size for what you are framing. So if we have our 40 square foot per roll, we can divide by our 15 inch width. And we wanna make sure that we convert this into feet so we're using proper numbers. And we come out with exactly 32 feet per roll. So each roll of insulation will cover 32 lineal feet of wall we can figure out the lineal foot of stud cavities in our wall system by taking our 124 foot perimeter, divide it by our 16 inch on center spacing of our studs, and we get 93 spaces. Important to note, in all of the repetitive items that we have been calculating to date thus far, we have always added one or subtracted one to get our counted item. So whether it's a joist, whether it's a stud, we need to make sure that we always add one or subtract one. This is where it's different. In this situation, we actually want the number of spaces. We're dealing with where the insulation goes and the insulation goes in the space. So we don't want to add or subtract one we actually want the 93 spaces. And if we know we have 93 spaces that are all 92 and 5 8 inch in length, convert that into feet, we see that we have 717.844 feet of insulation. And we just determined that each roll is 32 feet. So we can determine 22.4326, round up to 23 rolls if we do not subtract out for the openings. So if we do a little comparison with a square foot method, we calculated that we are going to need 24 with the openings included, without the openings, we determined that we needed 19. For the linear method, 
we determine with the openings, it is 23. So same measure, meaning we left the openings in for both of these, just by eliminating the studs where we don't have insulation, we saved an entire roll of insulation. And if we were looking at our actual numbers, it was 23.9, very close to 24, and 22.4, so that was actually halfway. So it's actually closer to a roll and a half of insulation that we're saving. We're not actually going to calculate the linear method by subtracting out the openings. The reason why is that it can get very detailed. If we are looking at a wall, let's say we have a window over here, we have a door over here, and in this wall, we'll have our spacing of our studs that are 16 inches on center. And without running a layout, we don't know where all those will fall. So we would have to figure out this full amount of lineal footage times two plus this little bit over here. We would have another full height for our door, about half over here. It can get very complicated because really we would have to include this amount if it wasn't a full cavity because we would just simply need to cut out the piece that was there. So this method, the linear method without openings, will give you a much more detailed number and the most accurate number, but it can be the most in-depth to figure out. So if we simply look, we could approximate that maybe we would only need 18 if we do a standard reduction of one roll uh, in comparison to the square foot versus linear. We could try getting away with only 18 rolls of insulation and then potentially having to buy an additional one. But again, we are not going to include in the sample calculation how to calculate the insulation linear method without openings.